Welcome to Harley Strictly Security, a conference about the renaissance of community-driven security. We've come a long way in our industry, but we haven't come this far only to go this far. And I want to talk to you today about the vast oceans and currents of threats that are coming towards us and how we can work together to navigate those, those threats. When I was thinking about this, I thought of another story. And I promise it's not just because I have four small children at home, although that might have influenced a little. And that's the story of Moana from Disney. Moana tells a story of a set of Polynesian Islanders who lived on an island and had a very comfortable life. Uh, they were, you know, had everything they needed on this island. And the status quo was great. That's until the status quo was rocked by danger approaching their shores. And most folks were paralyzed with fear when this happened. They didn't know what to do. They kind of just wanted to stay in what they'd always been doing and, and hope for the best. But a young woman named Moana knew that there must be a better way. There must be more out there. And she wanted to go beyond their island to find a solution to their problems. But again, everyone on the island was scared and, and didn't want to do that. But Moana knew that the ocean was calling to her and that there was something more. And in the end, she's guided by her ancestors who were wayfaring voyagers, who charted new courses across the sea to new islands and protected their people by finding new land when there were problems on where they currently were living. And that's based on a true story. Polynesian wayfarers were in some ways some of the greatest explorers that humankind has ever known. When Western sailors finally made it to the Pacific, they didn't believe that these sailors could have possibly navigated the vast Pacific Ocean without the you know, modern tools that Western sailors had at the time. But Polynesian sailors had a lot more at their disposal than the Western sailors gave them credit for at the time. They built systems and tools of looking at the stars, and they knew how to navigate across the equator by changing from using Polaris to using the Southern Cross. They were able to look also at the types of ocean swells that were coming to understand which direction the wind was coming from and where land was. They even saw land reflected in clouds above the ocean. And all of these methods of wayfinding and what led to some of the greatest exploration that humankind's ever known was community driven. It was passed down through or oral tradition and these wayfinders passed on this knowledge to each other throughout the various generations of Polynesian sailors. And that made me think a lot about our past as a security industry. And I think that's what this conference is really gonna be about. How can community-driven security, which is how security started, really get us back to the place of safety? How can it help us navigate the troubled waters that we're in today as an industry? And I think the fact that you're here at this conference today means that you know there's something more out there. It's calling to you. You are Moana, and you know that there's something better out there. And to look at where we're going, I think we first have to think about where we've been. What were the origins of cybersecurity as an industry? Well, in the early days of personal computing, the early days of the internet, what did the typical hacker look like, right? They were different from the rest of the establishment. It was folks like the Cult of the Dead Cow and Loft Heavy uh, Industries that led the way in saying that, hey, cybersecurity is something that we needed to think about. And at the time, yes, they were different than the establishment, but they really wanted the establishment to come along with them. And they wanted to teach everyone how important internet safety was going to be as more and more of our data was going to be online. Uh, in a lot of ways, they predicted the impact of the internet on privacy and security better than anyone else at the time. But what happened then? Well, a lot of companies looked down on them. They th saw them as different. They didn't want to listen to them. They wanted to kind of just stick their heads in the sand and not think about the security issues that they were bringing up. But these groups knew that the only way to address this was to make them public, to talk about it publicly, right? And so they tried to alert companies to issues that they found. But when those companies didn't take action, they knew that the way to force the hand of these companies was to talk about it publicly so that everyone was aware how they could make themselves more secure and how we could fix these kind of problems together. And in those early days, we also saw an explosion of open source software across all different kinds of parts of the software industry, right? And that included a lot of open source security software. Snort, which is a network intrusion detection tool. Wireshark, which was then called Ethereal, that helped you know, analyze network traffic as well. And Nessus, a vulnerability scanner. These open source tools were built not by big corporations, but by the community of 
open source software security folks who knew what was needed in order to make their networks and their data more secure. And much like the wayfaring tools of Polynesian sailors, these were a community effort that was passed down and everyone's good ideas came to bear on the problem so that we could find a more secure future together rather than working in these little silos. But what's happened since those early days? Well, much like in the story of Moana, we've decided that the status quo is what we want. We've closed ourselves off. We've moved to proprietary solutions. We've said that the way to secure ourselves is to, to close ourselves off from the world and, and build our own little teams and do our things in, in private, and, and that's going to make us more secure. And we feel like, oh, well, if we're doing what the industry standard is, then we're okay, right? We can just go along our, through our days and, and not think about the problems that are coming, right? At the same time, every industry has been transformed by the internet and by personal computing, right? We've heard this phrase that every company is a software company. And so with that has come a lot of new regulation. And that's important, right? Regulation comes with the ability to put together compliance frameworks so that we can understand are we compliant with the things that we should be when it comes to managing personal data and other security tools. But that also can be a problem if the focus becomes on compliance solely and not on really making things more secure and safer for everyone. And that really made me think of this quote from Admiral Grace Hopper, who says, the most dangerous phrase in the English language is, we've always done it that way. And I would just humbly add that I think the shorthand for we've always done it that way these days is industry standard. If we run the industry standard tools and we run the industry standard scans and we create the industry standard SBOMs and we read the industry standard PDF reports for vulnerabilities, then, well, we've done our best, right? We're following the industry standards. Surely we're going to be secure now, right? But is that really the best we can do? But I think we all really know differently, right? Those of us that are here today see a better way. We know that the industry standard is not enough, right? We might not be on the open sea yet charting our own course, but it's calling to us. We know the industry standard is enough because what is the industry standard? A, a new breach every week? Is that the industry standard? A new ransomware attack on critical infrastructure every other month? Is that the industry standard? A new zero day every other week? Is that the industry standard? The industry standard that we know isn't good enough. It's not good enough to be the standard we accept. This year was the first time that I got to experience firsthand the dichotomy that is Hacker Summer Camp, right? Having Black Hat and DEF CON right next to each other in Las Vegas. And it really cemented in my mind kind of these dueling worlds, right? This world of traditional vulnerability scanning where we really focus on, you know, checking all the compliance boxes and, yep, we're SALT 2 compliant. And yes, we've got, you know, a lot of green check marks on a PDF. Uh, and this is kind of this world of people in suits selling to people in suits, right? This software and the idea that if we buy the industry standard tools, well, then we can't get in trouble, right? Nobody ever got fired for doing the industry standard, right? It's so contrasted with the ethos at DEF CON that really calls back to those early days of community security. And the folks there are vigilant security engineers who know that they have to learn as much as they can about how threats are evolving, what's changing, what are the most trending CVEs, and what's happening that uh, uh, is new and novel and what new ways are folks thinking about attack surface management and how to penetrate different kinds of systems, right? These folks don't sit on their heels. They're not okay with the industry standard, and they're trying to learn as much as possible so that they can make themselves actually more secure and not just compliant. And at the same time, we're faced with this world where the attack surfaces are ever expanding, the ways that attackers are getting into systems and moving laterally is changing every day. We're deluged with a lot of noise about, you know, vulnerabilities or new CVEs. Uh, we've seen a massive increase in the number of CVEs every year, uh, and it's not slowing down. And all of this means that we need to actually get more efficient. We need to be able to communicate faster. We need to be able to, be able to react faster and be more proactive in our communication with not only ourselves as security engineers, but with our partners across our organizations and engineering, and really, again, across the industry. But our current tooling is really failing us here, right? It's not focused on the real threats often. It's giving us a bunch of noise about things that are maybe a problem for compliance, but you know, not really meaningful to an attacker, right? 
When's the last time you, as a, a bug bounty hunter or a red team member, you know, used a TLS version number to get into a company, right? That's not really what's important. And the tools that are focused on that, they're not focused on protecting against an attacker. They're focused on protecting against an auditor. And with that comes a whole lot of noise that doesn't really help us be more secure. And what's the industry standard here? Well, the industry standard often looks like, you know, using a bunch of PDFs and sending them on email uh, to the engineering team from the security team. You know, oh, we got this PDF output from our tool, so here you go, engineering team, good luck. Or even worse than that, maybe it's sitting in a meeting to review the PDFs that could have just been in an email, right? And, and why is this happening? Well, it's because of the difference in motivations between buyers of software and, and the folks, again, in suits that want to make sure they're checking the compliance boxes. And those of us that are really focused on how can we protect against an attacker before we protect against an auditor. We don't have a finding vulnerabilities problem. We have a communication problem and a prioritization problem. We need to be able to understand what are the most critical threats to work on next. And we need to be able to do that in an efficient way. We need a way that's both human and machine readable to help us with automation of the things that we can automate. And that's only going to increase as we see, you know, new threats coming through generative AI and other tools. And that's really what we want to talk about today. How are community members coming together to build tools that actually solve for these problems rather than solve for the problems of an auditor? How do we think like an attacker and bring to bear automation and tooling to make ourselves more secure? And again, I think the tooling is only part of it. And you're going to learn about a lot of cool open source tools uh, today in all of our different talks. I think one of the most critical things to solve for here, and I've said it a couple of times, is communication, right? We've got this ever-increasing number of CVEs. A lot of them are coming out with massively overstated severities, which makes it impossible or next to impossible for any human to kind of grunk all of the things that they need to understand in order to protect their environment. Instead, what we need is the ability to automate a lot of this and make the communication much more concise. Right? We don't want the preamble of a massive security report. That doesn't actually help us find the problems that we need to fix and doesn't help us communicate with our engineering partners about how to fix them. So what is needed is a universal language that defines very clearly in human and machine-readable format what is a vulnerability and how do we detect it and then how do we know it's remediated when we try to remediate it. And okay, I'm going to be a little biased here, but I think nuclei templates present a great method of doing this. Nuclei templates are an open source way to communicate the very key things that get to the heart of the matter for a given vulnerability. Give me a finite number of steps that reproduce the vulnerability, a very clear set of matchers that's community source that makes it, you know, very highly accurate in terms of false positives versus false negatives. And trust me, if there's a nuclei template that creates a lot of false positives, the community notices that really quickly and jumps all over it. I've been on the uh, receiving end of a lot of those issues where, you know, a community member runs a brand new template and says, hey, this is horrible. I've got lots of false positives and it gets fixed right away. And that getting fixed right away is really critical because, you know, it makes me think about when the next, you know, big uh, CVE comes out that is a big problem for everyone. What does that look like, right? Let's say it's, you know, similar to log for shell or something like that. So it gets mainstream media coverage, right? And now you've got your CEO who saw CNN in the morning and, they pick up the phone and they call you and they say, hey, where are we vulnerable to this? Are we vulnerable to this? And what's the answer? Well, you might be able to scan, you know, through all of your SBOMs to see where the software might be in your stack, but is that exposed or not? Is it exploitable or not? Hard to say. Okay, so vulnerability scanning. Okay, well, our proprietary scanner says it's going to be anywhere between three days and a week, and we should have a new definition that helps us scan for it. When the alternative is community-driven security, within hours oftentimes, there's a nuclei template that it can let you scan your entire infrastructure to actually see where are we exposed to this and where could an attacker actually exploit this vulnerability. That's a much better answer to that CEO on the other end of the phone that, yep, actually while we were asleep, a nuclei template came out and we're scanning right now for it and we'll know in a couple hours. In addition, the transparency of nuclei templates and the fact that they're open source makes all these problems shallow, right? Many eyes make problems shallow. And so with all of the eyes of the security community the best bug bounty hunters out there, the best security engineers from all over a number of different industries, all looking at the same set of templates, that communication gets that much more efficient. And then once we have remediated it, we can show our engineering partners exactly how the thing is reproducible 
and we can understand, has our remediation really worked? And it's not just project discovery in our community that's adopting this. Recently, the Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA of the United States, along with their partners in the UK, the NCSC, released an alert about Avanti and a zero day that they saw being exploited in the wild. And yes, this alert had all the prefunctory information that you'd expect from an agency alert like this, but also included was a nuclei template that the agencies developed together in order to let their agencies that rely on them, right, all the government agencies that rely on them, to go out and scan their infrastructure right away to see if this thing was available and exploitable in their infrastructure. And that is the power of a nuclei template. It allows you to very quickly disseminate information in a way that's both human readable and understandable, and then machine readable so that you can automate the checks against it. And there's contributions to these templates from all over the world. Like I said, we saw this one from CISA, but there's also the top bug bounty hunters and all kinds of folks worldwide. And it really gets to the core of security is everyone's responsibility, right? That's something that a lot of people like to say, but what do you really need to do that? And that's the key message that I hope you get from Harley Strictly Security Today and all of our speakers, that when we work together, we can make our future more secure. It makes me think of a Kelsey Hightower quote. Uh, Kelsey Hightower worked at Google for many years and was instrumental in one of the largest and most successful open source projects, Kubernetes. And what he used to say is, we're on the same team working for different companies. And that's really true of the open source world. And if that can be true for a bunch of hyperscalers working together on a massive platform like Kubernetes, it certainly can be true of us as security engineers whose ancestors, right, in the early 90s, thought about security as a community effort. And just like the Polynesian Wayfinders, we can find our way back to working together in order to secure our future. And that is how we'll all be able to democratize security together. Thank you so much for attending today, and we can't wait to see you in the rest of Harley Strictly Security.